As far as cutting is concerned, definitely um, you want to be concerned with the, uh, the surface that you're cutting on. Definitely avoid any hard surfaces like decorative glass cutting boards, straight on granite countertops, any sort of stone surface. A good rule of thumb is um, if the surface you're cutting on is as hard as or harder than the steel of the knife, you risk potentially doing damage or unnecessarily dulling your knife. The best surfaces to use are wood cutting boards or any sort of plastic or poly material. Um, again, a nice rule of thumb is if you can if you can mark the surface with the knife, that means you're using the right surface. If it's the other way around, if the surface you're cutting on is going to mark your knife, you don't want to do that because you're going to cause damage to your blade. So using a nice uh, wood surface, wood cutting board or plastic uh, cutting board is definitely the way to go. Eventually over time with cutting and use, the edge of your knife is going to start to dull. There's many ways that you can look after that at home, not to prevent dulling, but to ensure that you're going to keep a nice sharp edge for cutting without having to go to a professional sharpening service. Um, the edge of the knife is basically made up of a whole bunch of tiny little microscopic teeth. And over time, pounding on a cutting board or a cutting surface, those teeth are just going to get misaligned. So what you want to do is just bring them back into line straighten them up again. And the best way to do that at home is using one of these. This is called a honing rod, sharpening steel, some people will call it. It's not essentially sharpening your knife, sharpening your blade or, uh, or taking any steel off of the blade of the knife to bring the edge back. All it's doing is realigning that edge to make sure that it's staying sharp as long as possible and making sure that it's working properly for you. The best way to tell, um, or the best time or the way to use one of those is as soon as you notice your knife not quite cutting the, uh, the way you would desire it to, that's when to go to a steel. I'm going to show you how to use one of those in a minute, but I also want to talk about the pull-through sharpeners. So this is another really easy way of maintaining your knife at home without having to get too serious about, uh, about sharpening. Um, there's lots of different versions of these. You'll see some that just have one slot. You'll see some that have multiple slots. This one in particular has a coarse and a fine, as well as a scissor sharpener. We'll talk about that another day. Um, but if you find one that has a coarse and a fine, that's just talking about the level of grit that's in the stone, the ceramic uh, sharpening stones that are inside those slots. So all you're gonna do is, starting with the coarse one, you just set your knife down in, at the handle and without put without applying very much pressure at all just slide it through make sure you pull up at the end so you're getting the whole blade of the knife right to the tip a couple of swipes through on the course and you can work your way to the fine and again just easy sliding through there's no magical speed or or anything like that to use just just make sure that you're maintaining contact with those ceramic stones those ceramic wheels all the way through um, this is another one of those pull-through sharpeners that we have here. This one actually has a standard and an Asian version. The Asian version is just going to be set at a different angle. Japanese knives, some of those higher-end knives that you can find in the market, um, like our Miyabi collection from Zwilling, have a different angle. The edge of the knife uh, has a finer angle which means you're just gonna to have to have a different angle on sharpening. So that's why the Asian side compared to the standard side. For these twin master knives, you would just stick with the standard side. And again, coarse and then fine. Now, for using a sharpening steel, some people are afraid of these because they've seen on TV the professional chefs going like this, and making it look really uh, scary and intimidating. It doesn't have to be, very easy to use. First thing you want to look at is to make sure that the steel is longer than the blade of the knife that you're sharpening, because you want to get the whole edge of the knife from handle to tip. And if you have a shorter steel, I'm going to show you in a second, you would run out of steel before you get to the edge of the knife or the tip of the knife. The easiest way to ensure that you have very good control as well as visual so that you can maintain the perfect angle or the best angle possible is I say just stand the knife up or stand the steel upright like this. So 
so it's on a cutting board. It's not going to slip on you. You've got good control and good visual. The next thing you're, want, you're going to want to do, and this is the tricky part, is trying to find the right angle so that you're, you're sharpening the edge of the knife at a proper angle to realign that edge. And most North American knives, these knives are going to be in the range of a 15 to 18 degree angle. That's going to be difficult to see by eye. So one trick that I recommend is if you kind of start at that 90 degree, cut that in half, cut that in half again, and then just go in a little bit. That's about the appropriate angle you want to be at. And again, it's impossible to be exactly precise with that, but as close as you can get, and then just trying to maintain that angle as you slide it down the steel. You're going to start with a little bit of pressure, not so much that you're pushing the steel over, but a little bit of pressure so that you can really feel the blade on the steel itself and just slide it from handle to tip. Probably a few swipes on each side and your knife is going to be realigned and ready to cut again with ease. Really good test subject is a tomato. If you find that your knife is not slicing nicely um, without sawing or squishing through a tomato, time to bring out the sharpening steel for the honing rod. Um, give it a few swipes, try it again. You should be able to slice through with a straight edge blade with no trouble at all and no smushing of the tomato. That's really the best way to, uh, to look after your knife and make sure you maintain, uh, maintain nice sharp knives for years to use uh, at home for enjoyment and cooking pleasure. You're gonna find these will wear out in time. I don't know if you can see this uh, up close, but there is a little bit of grit you can see on the, uh, on the steel itself. Once that starts to wear out, once it becomes smooth, it's time to replace that steel because it's not going to be doing anything to, uh, to bring back the edge of your knife. But that'll last you a long time too. Again, sorry, I should have mentioned, there are a few different versions of the steel. You can get ceramic and diamond coated um, steels as well. But for, for the average knife, for these Twin Master yellow handle knives, for most of our range, just the steel, the regular steel honing rod is gonna do the trick. It's a, sh it's a hard enough material that it's harder than the, uh, the steel in the knife that it's going, to, uh, it's going to do what it needs to do. So that's pretty much our talk for today. Looking after your knives at home is going to prolong the, uh, the lifespan of your knives, make it easier to use, and make cooking more pleasurable and enjoyable. Thanks for your time.